what a body tag is? What's up guys, Jason here, Aspiring Entrepreneur, and in this video, we are going to go through a super, super basic, tech-free way to set up Google Tag Manager. So in this Google Tag Manager tutorial, we are going to do as little coding as possible, I promise, and I will show you how to set up Google Tag Manager. And the big reason you wanna do this is once you've added Google Tag Manager to your site, once you've created a Google, Google Tag Manager account, you will not have to play with body tags or header tags or footer tags ever again. The big benefit of using Google Tag Manager is essentially it puts a little piece of code on your site and then when you go do your analytics, when you go do Facebook marketing, when you go do YouTube marketing, you know, you go do AdWords, Google Ads, whatever you're doing, whatever kind of code you need to add to your site, Google Tag Manager is the one code you add. It's like the one code to rule them all, right? Once you add it, you don't have to touch your website again. You can just use the basic Google Tag Manager inference to add and remove code from your site. So it's super, super cool. And it might be a little complicated at first to set up, but I promise you it's gonna save you a lot, a lot of headache in the future. So with that being said, let's go ahead, dive into my screen look at how to set up the account and then all your different basic options. And then we'll go through a few quick examples of adding tags and pixels to your website so you can see how basic and easy it really is. So with that, let's dive in. Okay, so first things first, what you'll do is you'll head over to Tag Manager. You can get to this page by simply searching Tag Manager in Google, or you can go to google.com slash analytics slash tag dash manager and then go ahead and click sign up for free. Once you've clicked that, selected the Google account you want to be associated with your Tag Manager account, you can always add users later. You will come up with this page, yours will be blank. I have a couple in this particular account already. So you'll come up here and click create account. And what you'll do is you'll name your account. So let's say my company is awesome. And then you'll click continue and you'll go ahead and type in your website, mywebsite.com. It's important that you actually type the URL, click web, and then you'd go ahead and click create. So once you hit, click create, it will bring you to this page showing you the code to install on your website. Now you have a code to put in the header and you have a code to put in the footer. Now I know this is the HTML part, but I promise this is the first and last time you will have to play with HTML on your site when it comes to Google Tag Manager. Once you have this installed, you will never have to worry about trying to add more code to your website. You'll be able to use the Google Tag Manager interface for everything else moving forward. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and select all of this copy. So I've got two examples here for you. So number one, this is what a typical page builder would look like. This is what you're going to have inside of something like ClickFunnels or Instapage or lead pages, you know, Megaphone app, Unbounce, HubSpot, and most of those will actually allow you to have the header tag, the body tag, and the footer tag. This one is a little more basic, it just has the header. So we're gonna go ahead and post that in, paste that in there. And if you don't have a header tag, I would highly suggest looking up the documentation of your page builder and ask your support where you should put the other tag that's supposed to go in the body because it's gonna be different for every page builder. It's really weird. Most of the time I could say, well, you could probably get away with putting it in the header or the footer, but I've seen some really strange page builders out there where that just makes all sorts of wonky problems. So definitely if you don't have the option of the body tag, make sure to reach out to support of whatever page builder you're working with and just ask them, hey, where do I put the second part of Google Tag Manager? They should know because a lot of people will be asking them. So let's go ahead and go to an example that does it right. So this is Thrive Themes. This is on WordPress. You know, the header script, opening body script, and the body, body script. So what's cool about uh, most WordPress themes is when you go to your theme dashboard, you're going to have some sort of place where you can put in tracking code, analytics, you know, scripts. And so what's really cool here is I can just paste that in and then I'll go back. I'll select all of this and I will place it. Do, 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 do. Well, if I go to the right tab <laughs> and I will place it 
right at the opening body script. Now, Thrive Themes happens to be developed by marketers, so they know to have two separate boxes. Most of the time, you're just gonna have a body script box, and that's where you'd put the tag. So we're gonna go ahead and click Save Changes, and then we're going to make sure that it was installed correctly. So we'll go visit. You always wanna make sure it's working, right? So you go ahead and visit the site, and I have a Tag Manager plugin called Google Tag Assistant. And so what this is, is you can go to the Google Chrome store, it's free, download it, and what you'll, oops, I already enabled it, right? So when you first go to a website, you're gonna click on this guy and it's gonna look like this and you're gonna need to click enable and then refresh the page. And once you refresh the page, it will show you all the tags that are showing up on the site. Now what's really cool is you can actually go to other people's sites and see how they have things set up as well. This is, isn't exclusive just to your website. And this should show up green. The only reason it's showing up yellow for me is because I'm using another plugin to opt out of analytics tracking. And that's something a lot of us digital marketers do because we go to a lot of our clients' websites. And as you can imagine, if you go to your clients' websites five or six times a day, it's definitely going to screw with their analytics. So it's best if you tell Google to just not record you at all. So there you go. And if this is red for whatever reason, that means there's something broken, there's something wrong, and you can click through and it will tell you where to optimize. It will tell you what is wrong, right? And so once you have it green, Google Tag Manager is installed and then you don't have to worry about anything of this process ever again. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. Now next, I'm going to briefly cover definitely check out the link to the playlist in the description where we kind of go through each one of these step by step. Now, there are three services that I recommend everyone immediately add to their website once they've got it up and running. That's Google Analytics, that's the Facebook Pixel, and that's the Google Remarketing Tag. Now, even if you're not running Facebook or AdWords traffic or YouTube doing YouTube ads, I highly, highly recommend you add those anyway because there is no cost to collecting that data. Look, if you wanna go back in six months or a year and maybe do a small remarketing campaign or maybe have Facebook give you some insights on what kind of users are coming to your site, you can create lookalike audiences. There's some really powerful stuff in there. And even if you never plan on advertising, it's free data for you. And if you ever do go to one of those services to advertise, you're gonna have a tremendous amount of user data that that advertising platform has been connect collecting for you pretty much free um, over the span that it's been on there. So there's really, it's just risk-free data, if you will, and it leaves the door open for some really powerful marketing campaigns in the future, even if you think you're just gonna do content marketing 110%. So we're gonna go and click on add tag, and we'll click to configure tag configuration. So setting up AdWords and analytics is pretty straightforward. So. We'll go ahead and click on analytics and it will load in a second. Be sure to check out the channel because we've got a playlist going on everything Google Analytics. So we're gonna come over here to Google Analytics and you're gonna to go to your settings. You're gonna click on settings and then you're gonna choose the web property that you want to be, that is associated with this site and you'll click on property settings. And in property settings, you'll scroll down and you'll be able to copy and paste your tracking ID. So you'll copy your tracking ID and you'll paste it right, right into the web property ID. And then we can come down here and click on triggering. I'm going fast on purpose. And then we click all pages. All pages will be there for you. And you'll go ahead and click save. And then it will ask you, what do you want to name the tag? That's why I didn't click untitled because classic Google Analytics, that's perfect. Save, everybody's gonna know what that is. And now that you've set up the tag before you hit submit to make the changes live, we wanna make sure that everything is working the way it should. So we're gonna go ahead and hit preview. And this is gonna bring up a preview debugging mode for you. And so what you'll do is once it's loaded, it's saying now preview, go to the website that you've installed the tag on and refresh the page. When you refresh the page, you're gonna get this nice little thing down here. I believe you do need to be using Chrome for all of this to be working properly. And then you can see tags fired on this page, classic analytics, Google Analytics fired one time. Perfect, that means Google Analytics is working. It's saying it's firing when the page starts and you are good to go, whoops. And now you can leave preview mode and you can hit submit. 
So when you hit submit, that means the changes have gone live. Now, before we hit submit, I'm going to go over AdWords and Facebook very, very quickly. So we're clicking on the same things here. Then we're gonna click on AdWords remarketing. Instead of analytics, we're gonna to go to our AdWords account. And let me show you how I got here. And click on shared library. This is the old interface, by the way. Click on shared library audiences and then all website visitors or you can just come up here and click tag details. If you haven't done that, then check out the channel for you know tutorials on how to set all of this fun stuff up. And what you need out of this is the tracking conversion ID, right? Oh, don't wanna select everything, just wanna select that guy, very similar to Tag Manager. And if it keeps giving you trouble not allowing you to select it, just come down here and paste it in the notes section and then go ahead and select it. Copy, copy, that's what I get for not using a mouse today. And then we'll go back and add the conversion ID. Now you'll see conversion label. Most of you won't have this, but you'll look up to see if there's this string of text in your tag, you know, var conversion underscore Google underscore label. Uh, most of you guys won't have that. And then we'll go ahead and click on triggering all pages again because we're being nice and simple. Go ahead and click save, AdWords remarketing. Yes, that's what we're doing. And finally, let's go through Facebook in 30 seconds. So if you haven't set up your Facebook pixel yet, you'll go ahead and click set up pixel, and then you'll click use a integration or tag manager, click on Google Tag Manager, and then click quick install, and it will walk you through the process of adding the Facebook pixel to your website. It's even easier, ironically, than analytics and AdWords. So if you could, do analytics and AdWords, you can definitely do this one because you just click it and it will take care of everything for you. And of course, you'll probably wanna hit submit preview a couple of times, make sure everything's firing correctly, and then you'll go ahead and click submit and it will ask you all of this information that you probably don't really wanna figure out, do. So for here, you just pretty much wanna say what you did. So this is AdWords and analytics, and then we'll type what we did, Jason added, Google services to the JW site. Bam, there you go. And then you'll go ahead and click publish. And once you've clicked publish, it will be live on your site and it will be give you this nice little report letting you know that what's been updated, what's installed, and of course version one. And it will give you essentially catalog every change that you've made to your website. So you'll never have to worry about screwing things up because if you do, you can just roll back to a previous version. And that's all there is to it, to setting up Google Tag Manager for the first time. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative and actionable. If you got some value out of it, go ahead and hit that like button and then subscribe because over on my YouTube channel, I'm doing everything digital marketing, showing you all of the ins and outs of analytics like this and sales copywriting and sales funnel design when it comes to putting together a business from scratch. And of course, if you have any questions about Google Tag Manager, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think, thought about this tutorial, and if you have any questions setting it up for yourself, I read and reply to every single comment. So until the next video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and keep building the business you love. Take care.